Neptune Tuner here. This is going to be a quick video blog about tool buying. I've been buying a lot of Milwaukee power tools lately. I've been organizing my garage. I've been organizing my uh, mobile tools. I've been buying toolboxes. I've been, you know, a lot of, I've been cleaning up my garage lately and doing a lot of stuff kind of behind the scenes. And then I'm going to be putting better videos together. But in that process, I've been going to Home Depot and they had a Father's Day deal it was really pretty good with uh, the Milwaukee tool batteries and the, the tool combo deals. And this story, it's, it's made me pretty upset, mad, all, it's not even that big of a deal. I've had other things that, that have screwed me over way worse that I haven't even told you about. But for some reason, this is just pretty annoying, annoying enough to where, uh, maybe it'll help someone else out by the time I tell this story. So, Home Depot, my local Home Depot had a, a battery deal where uh, they were selling two of these, two of these 6.0 batteries with a charger and you would get the tool free. There was like uh, eight different tools you could pick from. And I did two of those deals. The, uh, the second deal that I did was for this 3 8 impact. I've already got two snap-on 3 8 impacts one of them I already had rebuilt and they're just, they're from like, I don't know, eight years ago, maybe six years ago, something like that, somewhere around there. And they're just not today, today's standards. The electric tools, these things apparently are made in China, but I, I guess if, uh, the reason why I went with Monkey real quick is because they've got the extended long neck, uh, and ratchets and nobody else except for Snap-on has those. As far as I know, someone can tell me in the comments. They've got a lot of cheap versions and things, but not the quarter drive long neck, the 3 8 drive long neck. For instance, they've got the 3 8 uh, ratchet style impact. Uh, I can make other videos about that stuff in the future and the, the things I recently bought, but I've been waiting to kind of put them through their paces. Back to the story. So I bought this battery and impact deal Immediately, I took both boxes. Like they got them locked up inside a counter behind the grid. Um, you know, they bought after that, they've got them locked up in uh, like an electronic device. So then you have to you have to ask to get them unlocked, and then you have to ask to, to you got to go to the counter and ask to get the electronic device taken off and all this. So I, I bought all my stuff. I took it straight from the U scan to my car. This car. I went ahead and popped the box open. Not so much on the batteries, but the impact. I just wanted to. I just wanted to see it. I'm, I, the reason why I'm, I've been splurging on this stuff lately. I just. I've been looking at my tools, and I was like, you know what? I need to add a three eighths impact to that pile of collection, and I wanted it then. I decided that I was going to do it, and I wanted it. And I wanted it in my collection right then. So I went. And I went and spent the money. It's a, it's a mild addiction. It's like, I, I, I want this, I want it now, I spent the money. So I went out to my car and I looked at the impact and it was this impact. This impact was not the fuel. It does not have, the, the fuel is gonna say fuel in the back and it's gonna have the selecting range right there, right? And the 3 8 impact, this is a quarter drive, but the 3 8 impact fuel is stubby like this. This one was not stubby. The box that I got, there's my receipt. The box that I got was for the 3 8 Stubby Fuel Impact M18. The impact that I got was M18. See the big battery on it? Didn't come with the battery. I just put the battery on there. But this is not the Stubby Nose. It's not the fuel. It's the regular cheapest one they got. So instantly my heart sunk. I was like, oh no, this is a bad deal. I, I ran right back in and told them exactly what happened, that I, I opened the box and it was the wrong impact. They went and quickly looked and they don't have any more. They don't have any more of these on the shelf. They told me that they're gonna get back with me to give me my name and, and phone number. Two days later, I go back and I check on it, nothing. Two more days later, so I give them my name and phone number and talk to someone else and tell them someone else what happened. Two days later, I get a call from the manager, a female manager, Tina, and says that she talked to her loss prevention team and that they can't do anything for me and I need to come pick up my impact that I got. 
apparently this this box right here came from a completely different store it's got a store number at the top there it, this this came from a different store they they thought that i was the person that swapped out the cheaper i'm sure that this is what they thought they thought that i was the person that swapped out the cheaper impact and put it in the more expensive box and and now i'm trying to get an exchange or a refund they thought i was the person but what really happened most likely was someone else previously cut the tape and someone else previously returned this someone else previously put a cheaper impact in the box and i'm the person now that has to deal with it i'm the person that has to go to customer service and say hey i unboxed the wrong tool hey you per the the tool that i purchased was the wrong one the box is correct but the tool that i pulled out was wrong so tina from uh post road indianapolis home depot which i would not suggest going to that store because i don't trust tina anymore from uh from home depot on post road i don't trust that store at all anymore uh, just from talking to her and uh and, and telling her what was going on and i, I don't trust her decision making abilities uh, so I just, just want to put that out there. The post road store in Indianapolis, I, I do not trust the management abilities at that store. Um, I just, I just, it's not that big of a deal, right? Right. I'll use this impact, but, uh, after talking with her, I just really want to make sure that everyone knows I don't trust that store or the decision-making abilities from that store. Um, so what you need to do when you buy a tool from any brick and mortar store is when you're still under the canopy of the cameras, right? It's a weird thing because you can't actually hold it in your hands until you pay for it. And then from paying for it to you scanning it or whatever, to getting out the door, it's like this, this much. So what you really need to do is before you, before you do anything else, as soon as you pay for it, make sure that the cameras are watching you and then, I don't care how much stuff you bought, and then open it up, preferably in front of a, in front of a store associate, in front of the U-Scan cashier or something, and then open it up so, so they know you're not doing like some magic trick or something, and then, and then pull it out, pull it out of the box and say, and say, hey, hey, this is, verify that it's the correct tool or not the correct tool, and if someone screwed you over, then you can say, hey, Hey, yeah, I need the correct tool, not the not the bad tool, not the wrong tool, not the tool that I didn't buy, not the tool that I didn't anticipate buying. Uh, make sure that you open the box in the store from now on.